This image shows the three main bones of the knee. We have the tibia and the fibula, which are two of the bones in the shin, the tibia being the larger of the two, which the ACL runs from, and the femur is the bone in the thigh, and this is where the ACL runs to. The tibia and femur move on each other to create bending and straightening movements called flexion and extension. In this image, we look over the top of the tibia, in this case, a right tibia. In anatomy, we use the words lateral and medial to describe the outside and inside of an object. We use anterior and posterior to describe the front and the back. We can see in pink the footprint of the anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL, and in blue, the footprint of the posterior cruciate ligament, the PCL. The ACL starts more anterior and medial, while the PCL starts more posterior and lateral. We then see how the lateral and medial meniscus sit between these footprints and we can then understand how easy it is to get lateral or medial meniscus injuries when we have cruciate ligament tears. We then introduce another bone of the knee, the femur. In this picture looking from in front we are looking at an extremely flexed if not dislocated knee. We can see how the PCL attaches in the medial portion of the intercondylar groove of the femur, whereas the ACL attaches in its lateral portion. However, this image shows another detail. The ACL is actually made up of an anterior medial and a posterior lateral bundle. In this view, we can only see the insertion point of the posterior lateral bundle at the femur. Rotating the femur and looking from the inside or medial side, and cutting away some of the bone, we see how the posterior lateral bundle inserts ahead of the anterior medial bundle along the intercondylar groove. If we rotate the tibia into the same view and add the whole ACL, we can see how it runs in its entirety. We can then see what happens when we extend the knee. The relationship between the two bundles changes. The fact that an ACL has two bundles allows it to not only control shearing forces, also twisting forces. This is a consideration for science and doctors in deciding how to best reconstruct this ligament.